if I'm watching the simulation with the point moving around the circle. I can follow this point. I can follow the vertical coordinate of the point as it goes up and down and up and down. Okay, I can move my pen along the y-axis. I start here hit a point directly opposite the point in the circle and I go up and down and up and down and up and down and so forth. Now, if somebody was to start pulling the paper across the table at a constant speed, what would happen? I'd be going up and down and up and down, but I'd also be moving to the right. If the paper is pulled at a constant rate, then I'll move at a constant rate to the right. And I'll trace out a curve, much like the black curve you see here. Now this is going to be called a sine curve, alternatively a cosine curve, but with some kind of a, what we call a phase shift. And you don't have to understand exactly what those terms mean at this point. Now uh, that's why we're doing these exercises to develop the idea of those terms. So we can go, uh, we, we can trace out the curve that we would get. And what we think of is time is moving this way and our y coordinate is of course going up and down. So this is a graph of the y coordinate of the point on the circle versus the clock time. Now if we do this at three radians per second we might get a curve like this. If we do it at 6 radians per second, and you should actually do this and see that it really does work out. If we do this at 6 radians per second, we're going to go around the circle twice as fast as before. And if we move the paper at the same rate, that means we're going to go through the complete cycle up, down, and back in half the time. Since we're moving twice as fast, our frequency around the circle is twice as great. It's going to take us half the time here and we're going to get something like the red curve. It makes a complete cycle here, then a complete cycle here. Notice that the red curve meets the black curve at this point. The black curve makes half of its cycle while the red curve makes its whole cycle. Then the black curve makes another half of its cycle while the red curve goes through a whole cycle. By doubling the frequency we get we get an error here. This says twice the peak-to-peak -peak distance. It should say half the peak-to-peak -peak distance. Now it's going to be difficult for me to write this on a moving target from this angle, but it's clear that we have half of the peak-to-peak -peak distance, so when we double the frequency we get half the distance between peaks. We also notice that if the radius of this circle is 5, then we go from uh, the zero point on the axis up to plus 5 and down to negative 5. So that our maximum y value is 5 and our minimum y value is negative 5. And of course the distance between the maximum and minimum or minimum and maximum y values, whichever you wish, the distance is 10. Taking a somewhat closer look at some of the terminology we're going to use. Uh, if delta t is a time per revolution, then that delta t is what we call the period t. If it takes us three seconds to go through a revolution, then our period is three seconds. The number of revolutions per second is the frequency. If it takes us three seconds to go around the circle, then our frequency is one-third of a revolution per second. Okay, number of revolutions per second. If it takes us three seconds to get all the way around, then in one second we're going to only go one-third of the way around. So our frequency is one-third, or our, our, our uh, yeah, frequency is one-third of a cycle per second. The number of radians per second is what we call the angular frequency. Now we want to remember that a complete cycle here is two pi radians, so that if we're going around a complete cycle in three seconds, then we have two pi radians in three seconds. That's two pi radians per three seconds. 
each radian is going to take us then 2 pi over 3 seconds. And we'll see that shortly. We'll make that uh, statement a little more formally. If we look at the graph now, okay, we've talked about the motion in the circle. If we look at the graph, what are some of the things that we use to identify the characteristics of the graph? Well, if we're measuring clock time across here, then the period T is a time between peaks from here to here. Now, I also say wavelength lambda, because in your text you'll see the text talking about wavelength. Uh, and that's important, although that's a little harder to observe in class. Uh, if we're doing y versus x, like we have an ocean wave, if this is a model of an ocean wave, okay, a wave moving across the ocean, and we take a snapshot of it at some specific instant, then we have a y versus x, and we would call the peak-to-peak -peak distance the wavelength. So if we're measuring distance here, then the peak-to-peak -peak distance is wavelength. If we're measuring time on this axis as we are in this graph, then this is the period. So for a y versus t, we call this peak-to-peak -peak distance the period. For a y versus x, the peak-to-peak -peak distance we call wavelength lambda. The amplitude is a distance from the axis to the extreme point, to either extreme point. We're talking about a distance. The distances aren't positive or negative, uh, but just the distance from this, uh, uh, the central point to the extreme point is what we call the amplitude of the wave. So those are some of the characteristics, some of the terms that we use in describing waves.